What's up, everybody? We are back in the house tonight, and I want to welcome you back to the one and only Kiss God Radio right here on LoveRadioNetwork.com. Y'all say it with me. Love is where it's at. Y'all, I'm Pastor P, and I want to thank you for being with me, but that's the truth, right? Love is truly where it's at. It's the love of God where it's at, and this is what Kiss God is all about. It's all about learning how to love God, love yourselves, and love others the right way. So tonight, we're going to be talking about something that, uh, that I was just thinking about, praying for you as I was approaching my computer and doing some reading today. Uh, something that I went over a while ago, but I want, to, I want to revisit it, if you don't mind. But before I do that, I want to say, how was your Thanksgiving? I want to ask you, how was your Thanksgiving? And I pray that you enjoyed your family, your friends. Your friends given, uh, you know, wherever you went, inviting people over, even if you spent time by yourself. Happy Thanksgiving to you. And now we're approaching the giving season of Christmas, right? The giving, not only the receiving, but the giving season of Christmas. And so I want to welcome you to this season on uh, Kiss God Radio and the sessions that I'm going to be talking about. And whatever God drops in my spirit, that's what I'm going to share with you. One of the things I do want to let you know is that Kiss God is, it's not all about relationships. Somebody was talking to me and asking me, you know, you know, about hooking up, finding a man, how you know he's the right man. Well, we will talk about things like that. You know, my brothers as well. But Kiss God is about what I just said, learning how to love God. Learning how to love yourself. What do I do with myself in this season of singleness, right? Learning how to love others the right way. You know, you can love somebody the wrong way. You know, you can love the wrong person. So we want to talk about a a multiple of things. We are multifaceted people. So therefore, we need to look at the whole man and not just a segment of man. We need to look at the uh, different dimensions of life in man. So that's really what Kiss God is about, starting with God and focusing on yourself and uh, then going into relationships, you know, seeing whether a relationship is transactional, is a relationship uh, relational, right? As, uh, you know, is it a relationship that I need to be in, I need to run from, I need to pray about. Uh, We should pray about all of our relationships, tell you the truth. So nevertheless, we want to just let you know that Kiss God enters into different segments, financial, emotional, mental, spiritual. Uh, You know, we we try to deal with uh, as much as possible. So this is right. We want you to invite somebody. Invite friends, family, you know, whoever it may be, invite them on and uh, be a part of uh, Kiss God Radio every Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. Every Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. And we love, love, love to have you. All right. Now, thank you for listening to LoveRadioNetwork.com. And I, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, you can fall in love right here on LoveRadioNetwork.com. So listen, y'all, I got something to say. So let's pray. Father, we thank you right now for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for all those that are listening this evening. Father, I pray that you grant me the tongue of the learned to speak life to them, to help the single men, help the single women to, Lord, add value to themselves, Lord God, and they will turn and add value to others. Thank you for loving them and being married to them. Thank you, O Lord, for strengthening them. So, Lord, I pray that they will not get off this platform the same way that they got on, but with more of you and less of themselves. And we thank you, God for Love Radio Network. Thank you for Dr. Charles Dean. Continue, Lord God, to use him. Continue to lift him up, Lord. We thank you for what's about to happen in his life, oh God. We thank you for Love Radio Network. In Jesus' name, amen 
Amen and amen. All right. I want to take you quickly to Philippians, the fourth chapter. Now, I know, I know this is not Bible class, but it is Kiss God Radio. Philippians, the fourth chapter, and the Apostle Paul said something that, again, it stood out, and and I'm going to just share a couple of things. He said, I know how to be abased, and I know how to be abound everywhere, and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That is such a wonderful, wonderful text because Paul was single, right? Paul was single, and I talked about him several times on Kiss God. And uh, during the seasons, uh, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, you know, uh, I, I can find it difficult for singles, and I'm, you know, basing this off of conversations that I've had, that uh, it's difficult to be content and, and not, uh, really not wanting or feeling emotional because you may not have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or you may not be engaged or you may not be married or what have you. But I'm going to let you know, being content is what God uh, seeks for, what God wants more out of you, being content with him, being content with what you have, being content with yourself. Learning again, this is the learning how to love myself and and not worrying so much about when is Mr. Right coming, when is, uh, you know, that, that, that beautiful young lady coming into my life. God has a perfect time for that. God has a time for it, or, or he may not have a time for it at all. We don't know. But the thing is that you just want to be content with who you are and where you are because God has a plan for your life. That's what he said in Jeremiah. I have a plan for you to prosper, a plan for you to do well, a plan for you to soar, a plan for you to continue to dream. I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. And I want you to continue to abide in my will. That's what it's really all about. So listen, while we was um, over the weekend, you know, we we, we watch football, right? And I don't know how many of you are football fans, but you watch football. And and, and a team can be um, in the beginning, the first quarter, second quarter, they may be winning or they may be losing or... Right? Watch this. Or or zero zero at halftime. At halftime. I believe that it may be halftime in your life. And halftime is when you have to reflect. You gotta regroup. You gotta really start seeing where you are, what you need to do to do better, what you need to do to win. Right? And this is where God really has you here and, and kiss God is that halftime season. We're entering into 2024. That halftime. How do I deal with going back out? What, what, how, am I, how, how am I going to handle this new season of my life? Are you with me? How, how, do I, how do I deal with these new relationships? See, our lives, they change, right? Um, lives, you know, they sometimes they go the way that we want them to, and then sometimes it doesn't. You know, we gather experiences, uh, emotions, knowledge, self-awareness, and we miss pain and, and, and triumphs and disappointments. And then we got to use wisdom on, we get ourselves into things and then we got to get ourselves out of things or we got to pray and ask God to get them, get us out of things. So, but one thing I realize is that during the time of singleness, you have to start to really reflect and say, what's my next step, right? What is, what is my next step? And, and, and not worry about what others have, but be content with what I have. 
That's what God is really saying. And the Apostle Paul said, I learned how to have. I learned how not to have. I learned how to be content in my life. And that's, that's what I want you to focus on because contentment is a sign of stability. Got it? Contentment is a sign of stability. And not only that, it's a sign of intimacy in your relationship with Jesus. See, so let's look at what what is contentment. Hmm, how, let me see. How am I going to say this? It's, 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 it's easy to get, or is it easy to find? Is it is it something that is available to some people while unimaginable or unattainable for others? Now, one definition of contentment is being satisfied with what one is or has, not wanting more or anything else, okay? That's, that's a definition of contentment. So how is it possible that we live in a society that always wants more and everything seems better than what we already have? Uh, so we got to stop and think about that because we always look at the grass is always green on the other side, but is it really? Is it a mirage? Is it in our minds? What, what really is it? I'm just trying to get you to just say thank you, Lord, for what I have today and who I am today. And I really believe that if we can stop and if we can turn and look towards God and be content and not compare and not be in discontentment, I truly believe that God will begin to show you what is to come, who is to come. So it's easy for uh, women to compare themselves. And we, you know, sometimes our brothers compare themselves t to other brothers that, that may have six uh, figures and drive a certain car, live in a certain home. Women, again, women compare themselves, uh, hair, skin, clothes, children, boyfriend, husband, job, finances. You know, immediately they can begin to compare. But do you recall how you feel afterwards? Do, do you feel when you compare, do you feel lonelier? Do you feel fatter? No, no I'm, I'm serious, you know. Um, do you feel smarter or not so smart? Do you feel beautiful or not so beautiful? And, and so I'm here, to, I'm here to tell you, all that is a trap. That comparison is a trap. And Satan always wants you to be in competition. That, that he can convince you to believe that big fat lie. That you're not as good. Uh, you're nowhere near as good. So, so don't even try it. And then the more you internalize the enemy lies, the more you will believe it. And this is the reason why I want you to get into the state of contentment. You see, the, the, you, you don't want to believe the lie of the enemy. You want to know that God calls you to be beautiful and handsome. This is who you are. And, and, and you don't need to be saying, what's wrong with me? Because nothing is wrong with you. I want you to be content with who you are and where you are. I truly believe that the more we meditate on bad thoughts, they become exalted above God's truth in our lives and they become powerful in our lives. So that's the reason why the word of the Lord is, is what we must focus on. And, and the word of the Lord is something that we must read every day and believe every day. And the enemy is always talking to you. He's always talking to you, and I want you to say, I'm not going to accept that. I'm not going to accept that. You see, you got to believe the word of God. And the Bible speaks very, very clearly in Psalms 34 and 10 that the young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Now stay right there with me. Stay right there. Psalms 34 and 10, the young lion lacks and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Y'all, this is Kiss God, right? This is Kiss God. And I really need you to focus and seek God. Because when you are content in him,
and you're not comparing yourselves to, to other things and other people, you will begin to see how your life just unfolds. True joy, true happiness, true fulfillment will come to you. It doesn't matter what your what your boys have or your girls have and all of that. See, when you start to compare, envy sneaks in. Yeah. And and you know when when envy sneaks in, it begins to diminish what God did for you. Got it? Come on. Come on. Do me a favor. Look at yourself in the mirror. And say, I'm God's chosen. I'm God's choice. I'm God's pride and joy. This is who I am, right? It's so important to stay, stop and, and really look at, 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 at the word of God. And, and you don't say, I'm, I'm, I'm better than others. No, you just say, I'm blessed. That's it. I'm blessed. Live and obey. Love and believe. Live and obey. Love and believe. Are you understanding? See, see where you are right now is God's place for you. Okay? Now, there's some decisions that you have to make. There's some things that you have to do. You're moving into 2024. What is it that you want to do? Your dreams, your goals. Remember, it's halftime. No matter where the teams are, they both went into that locker room and they talked about what they was doing on the field a couple of minutes ago. I want you to do the same thing, singles. It's halftime. I need you to get into that locker room of your life and I need you to start saying to yourself, I got to go back out there in a few minutes. I, I, I'm going to end up getting into a relationship Sometime in my life, am I ready? Am I ready to take on this new adventure, this, this, these goals? Am I, am I ready? Am I ready to make this touchdown? Am I ready to kick this field goal? Am, am, am I prepared mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially? Am I, am I really ready? Come on, talk to yourself in that locker room. Come on, talk to yourself in that locker room and begin to ask yourself, am I ready? Because if I'm not ready, get ready. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? It's not all, it's not all about what other people have. It's all about it. I got to go out there and I got to get on that field and God is my coach. And he's going to tell me every play that I need to make. And I'm going to be happy with it. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength and in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. You got it? Because learning how to be content during your season of singleness, I get it. It can be very difficult. I'm not telling you that life is, is just all easy. But the key to find that balance in this season is not to spend so much time focusing on the past or the future, but allowing God to show you his perspective. That's what it's all about. Allowing God to show you his perspective, his purpose, his will for your life. And, and that's what I want you to do in this season. Because this season is going to come and, and, and people are going to feel burdened. People are going to be sad. You're going to ask yourself a lot of questions. you know. But, but ask him, ask God to help you. Not to see it as a burden, but a blessing. Your life is a gift from God. He wants you to enjoy it. Live every day of your life in celebration of the gift he has given you. Take time to think about how you define life and happiness. Do you think you have to be married to be happy? Do you think you have to be in a relationship to be happy? Do you believe that you can be content as a single? Come on, somebody talk back to me. It doesn't matter what you think because the truth is is you can be content God desires for you to be happy and that peace with being single 
He doesn't want you to rush out of this season or to get out of his will because you're unhappy or because Jackie has a, a man or Ray has a girlfriend and they're getting married. No, decide today that you will no longer be discontent being single and that you're going to be happy. You could be happy at home. You could be happy at work, right? You could be happy in church. Come on. You can be happy. You go to New York City. You can go to California. You go wherever you want. You can be happy. Psalms 37 and 3 says, the second part of the verse says, dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. This means to stay where you are and be content in this season. Don't rush out of God's will. Back in the day, not even back in the day, but I say it now, don't create an Ishmael. See, that's what Abraham did. Abraham had sex with his maid and he created an Ishmael. When he wasn't supposed to, he was supposed to wait for God and wait for Isaac to come. Don't rush out of this season. If y'all didn't hear anything else that I said tonight, I'm going to say it again. Don't rush out of this season. You got it? Don't rush out of this season. Season. I don't care what they look like, what they smell like, what they feel like. Don't get caught up in your emotions. Don't rush out of this season. Feed on God's faithfulness. You got it? Feed on God's faithfulness and all he has done for you. When you're lonely, questioning God and, and hungering for a relationship, feed on, think about, meditate on how faithful he has been to you. Now I know you're saying, and that's easier said than done, Pastor. That's easier said than done. See, because, uh, you know, you just don't, you just don't get it. <laughs> yes, I do too. This is the reason why I'm talking to you. Because I want you to find your contentment and knowing that God knows right where you are in life. He knows your struggles. He knows your desires. He knows everything about you and intends for you to live a good life. Contentment is all about rest. That's all it's about. It's about rest. Contentment is being free from striving. Contentment is being humble enough to wait on the Lord and trust in him. Trust them to bring it to pass instead of being prideful and expecting your way, your own way. Contentment is a sign, what did I say? Of stability and intimacy. Stability and intimacy. I need you to do that. I need you to seek the Lord. The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalms 37 and 4. The Bible says also, Psalms 37 and 7, I will rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. God will keep you in perfect peace because you trust in him and your thoughts are fixed on him. Are you with me? So singles, I want you to really wrap your love around God. He'll give you revelation of himself and of yourself, how to live how to rest in the promises of God, how to find peace in the shade of God. The very reason you created your identity. Let me tell you something, singles, and, and, and I'm done, but your identity is found in worship and in praise. Begin to thank him, hunger for his presence. Ask him to teach you how to love him. God will teach you how to focus on him and not the storms of life. He'll cause you to build a solid foundation and wells to draw from intimacy, intimacy. Intimacy is what you seek with God. You begin to crave this, this love that will last forever. It's a love affair. God says, I love you forever and forever you will be mine. I want you to be content today, singles, because God is going to take you to a place. I really feel this in my spirit. Once you, once you get into that, that place of contentment, God is going to begin to show you. He's going to show you where and who you need to be around, who's coming in, 
He's going to show you and he's going to close doors and then he's going to open up doors too. Be content. God is about to show you a love that you never had. He's about to blow your mind. It's God's will, not your will. It's God's will. And all he wants you to do is say, yes, Lord, yes to his will, yes to his way. Be content, be content. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things. Seek him, seek his righteousness. And all these other things will be added to you. Are you hearing me? God is with you and God loves you. Singles, God loves you and so do I. And I pray tonight that something that I said will bless you and has blessed you. Listen to it again. Go back to Love Radio Network and listen to it in the archives of Kiss God Radio. My time is up and I thank you for yours and I love you, love you, love you, love you so much. And I want you to join me again next week. And we're going to do some more talking about just your relationship with yourself, your relationship with God, and your relationship with others. It's going to get gooder and gooder and gooder. That's not a word, but it's going to get, it's going to get better and better and better. All right, y'all stay tuned because something even greater is coming. All right, God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. I pray that you go in peace and may your peace be multiplied. Charlie Rock, you know what to do. Take us to the bridge. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. Oh, 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 God has smiled on me. He's been good to me.
Thank you. 